As 2024 comes to a close, and as all the raw editors have released the latest and greatest updates, this means only one thing, it's time to count down the top 5 desktop raw editors for 2024. This year's countdown though will be slightly different, as we're going to only be including those raw editors which offer a perpetual license. For those who don't mind a subscription, Adobe Lightroom would still be my pick as the best raw editor for its unmatched feature set and overall performance. The reasons of which I've outlined in last year's top 5 video. Do check that out if interested. However, if you're into owning your own software instead of renting it, then this video is for you. By the way, do note, as in years past, I will be releasing a companion video following this where I will be doing a slideshow comparison of raw editing results so you can be the final judge of which one is the best. Do watch out for that. Now before we go on to the list, let's run through this year's criteria which has slightly been tweaked from last year. In order of importance, with the first being the most important, at number one is tone adjustment performance. The ability to make quality tone adjustments, as far as I'm concerned, is the most important function of any RAW editor. For this criteria, we look at whether basic tone sliders, exposure, shadows, highlights, blacks, produce visually pleasing and artifact-free results. Whether the adjustments are able to recover detail in even extremely dark or bright areas, properly taking advantage of the extra data in a RAW file or whether the adjustments target the right tones. The second criteria is local adjustment capability. This criteria covers the ability of the raw editor's tools to create precise masks even in complex areas and the quality of adjustments on the masked areas. The third criteria is the quality of user interface. This has to do with how easy the raw editor is to use and the snappiness of the user interface. The fourth criteria is other features this has to do with any other feature, for example, photo management tools or AI tools that enhance the editing experience. The fifth criteria is recent improvements. This is a new criteria for this year, which takes into account the quality of the features added in the past year, hopefully reflecting the company's commitment to significantly improve its product. So with the criteria out of the way, let's run through the list. At number five is Photomator for the Mac. Photomator for the Mac costs $99 for a perpetual license and $30 for a yearly subscription. 2024 was, by any metric, a slow year for Photomator with hardly any new features added. In terms of tone adjustment performance, Photomator's is very good. Its tone adjustments exhibit excellent detail recovery and pleasing true-to-life color, never looking washed out or unnatural, no matter the amount of adjustment. It is particularly good at recovering detail in overly bright skies, as you can see here. Photomator is the editor of choice when you need seamless editing between Apple devices or when you just desire the simplest user interface in a raw editor. In terms of local adjustments, Photomator stands out for its intuitive and precise AI masking, which makes local adjustments a breeze. Its masking workflow, which allows masks to be combined seamlessly for sophisticated masking results, is the best designed in raw editing. So those are Photomator's strengths. What about its weaknesses? Photomator's weaknesses, which keep it at number five, are the following. The first is its inability to recover detail in extreme cases. For example, as you can see here, as I try to brighten the shadows in this severely underexposed photo, Photomator cannot perform this task correctly, the only editor to fail in this basic task. In addition, when brightening overly dark shadows, Photomator has a tendency to perform some sort of denoising or smoothing process which robs the area of detail and sharpness. Also, Photomator lags other editors when trying to balance color in extremely bad color casts, as you can see here. Finally, Photomator even today, lacks basic features like a brush with any edge detection or even a dehaze function. Also, as mentioned, Photomator was the worst performer when looking at the amount of features added in the past year. Its main achievements in 2024 was, number one, adding support for file browsing, which it added way back in December of 2023. And second, adding flags and star ratings, 
which it added this past October. And that's about it. We are hoping Apple's recent purchase will be able to rejigger some life into Photometer's development. At number 4 is Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo costs $79 for a perpetual license, which is lower than Photometer, and $50 for a yearly subscription. Luminar Neo moves past Photometer due to newly added features just this year and a significantly lowered price, which seems to be part of the company's more aggressive pricing strategy since the start of the year. In terms of tone adjustments, Luminar Neo's adjustments works well, delivering targeted results which look visually pleasing, exhibiting strong dynamic range for both shadows and highlights. Better than Photometer, Luminar was able to recover detail in the severely underexposed image, competently utilizing the extra data available in the RAW file. In terms of local adjustments, whereas last year's Luminar was woefully disadvantaged over Photometer, this is no longer the case due to significant updates introduced to its masking tools. In April, Luminar was updated to include both an object select masking tool, which allows for making a precise selection of an object in one click, and a luminosity masking tool, which allows for masking based on the tonal range in an image, both tools of which Photometer lacks. This past October, Luminar further improved its masking capability by introducing a color masking tool, although Photometer does have this as well. So with three new masking tools, Luminar's offering is now much more robust and in many ways has overtaken Photometer's. Other reasons to choose Luminar over Photometer, Luminar has generative AI capabilities, which just this past October has been significantly updated to be improved in performance, and its vast array of extensions, such as those for HDR merging and focus stacking, in addition to unique capabilities like sky replacement, further enhance Luminar's value proposition over Photometer. So with Luminar's lower perpetual license price combined with its vastly greater feature set, I believe in 2024, Luminar has overtaken Photometer. However, you might ask, are there any reasons to choose Photometer over Luminar? Certainly, you might prefer Photometer's more true-to-life color over Luminar's, which has more of a tendency to look overprocessed. You may also like Photometer's more intuitive interface and navigation, or you might prefer Photometer's seamless interoperability with iPad and iPhone, and even with Pixelmator Pro, all of which Luminar cannot match. Finally, Luminar also has an issue with DxO denoise DNG files. As you can see, when bringing down very bright highlights, Luminar has a tendency to introduce a purple hue, while other raw editors, including Photometer, did not. At number three is On One Photo Raw 2025. On One is currently on sale, costing just $50 for a perpetual license, the lowest among the raw editors in this list. Despite its low price, its tone adjustments performance is excellent and just like Luminar can handle bright skies or dark shadows competently. Better than Luminar though, On One did not have any issue with DxO denoised DNG files and correctly did not produce a purple cast. In terms of local adjustments, on One is better than Luminar in two ways. First, On One's masking brush supports edge detection, while Luminar's brush does not. Second, On One's object selection tools, which include Mask AI and Super Select AI, beats Luminar's object select tool in accuracy and reliability, which I've talked about in a previous video. Do check that out if interested. In terms of other features, on One beats Luminar with its vastly more sophisticated and functional photo manager, which allows for better cataloging, search, and organization. On One also has the far better denoiser in No Noise AI, which was greatly improved this past June and performs much better than Luminar's noiseless AI. Finally, this past October, On One added generative AI erase and expand capabilities which mimics Luminar's own offerings and diminishes Luminar's advantage in this area. However, better than Luminar, On One's generative erase can be used locally without the need for a subscription. So with the current lower perpetual license price and the advantages just outlined, On One is the superior raw editor. However, is there any reason to go for Luminar? Yes, 
You might like Luminar's simpler user interface and navigation over on ones far more complicated and sluggish design. You might also like Luminar's more colorful raw processing over on ones more neutral looking processing. You might also like Luminar's superior tools such as its HDR merging, focus stacking, and sky replacement. Also, you might like Luminar's multitude of extensions which make a variety of editing tasks much easier. At number 2 is DxO Photolab 8. DxO Photolab 8 costs $220, a big jump from on one's pricing. So what does DxO have that justifies this large price increase? In terms of tone adjustments, similar to on ones, DxO's is pretty solid. It had no problem bringing back detail in both dark shadows and bright skies with pleasing results. As with on one, DxO had no problem with this very underexposed moon scene. However, better than On One, which contained a visible artifact, DxO was able to perform the adjustment largely artifact free. In terms of other reasons to choose Photolab 8 over On One, I would say first is the difference in color processing. DxO's processing produces richer, vivid color over On One's more neutral looking colors, which you might prefer. Second would be its class leading D Prime XD2 denoising, which improves noise performance by a mind boggling three stops of ISO. Third would be its lens softness correction tool, which makes images sharper by correcting for inherent lens defects and actually works when I reviewed it earlier this year. Fourth would be its clear view dehazing, which is also a better performer than on one's offering. Last but not the least, I would cite DxO's user interface and navigation, which compared to on ones is far more polished, better designed, and snappier. So while I believe DxO is the superior raw editor, what might be some reasons to choose on one over DxO? Actually, there are plenty. Aside from its significantly lower price, you might choose on one for its more powerful photo manager, which works with all file types, has more comprehensive search and cataloging and organizational features. In case you didn't know, DxO's photo manager won't even handle video or mobile raw files. You might also like on one's more neutral looking color over DxO's vivid color, which might at times look unnatural. You might also dislike DxO's global adjustment performance, which if used excessively, will make an image look cheesy and overprocessed. Or you might like on one's useful AI features such as generative AI tools for removing large distractions or brilliance AI. You might also like that on one has AI object masking while DxO has no AI masking tools to speak of. At number one is Capture One Pro. Capture One costs $299 for a perpetual license and $180 for a subscription. In 2024, Capture One widens its lead due to solid improvements to core features and new offerings. In terms of tone adjustments, Capture One's is excellent and in my view, the gold standard for its true-to-life color and excellent detail recovery in even the worst exposed photos. You can see how Capture One's highlights adjustment is able to recover details in this overly blown out sky while the XO struggles. Capture One Shadows and Blacks adjustment is also excellent, not only exhibiting wide dynamic range, it also targets tones exceptionally accurately. Just like DxO, it did not produce any artifacts in this severely underexposed scene. In terms of local adjustments, Capture One, already the best on this list for last year, has widened the gap due to new updates introduced in the past few months. In May, Capture One upgraded its AI masking to be up to four times faster for subject and background masking and 18 times faster for object masking. AI masking in Capture One is now practically instantaneous, which is great for the overall user experience. In October, Capture One further widened the gap with the release of people masking. Capture One is now the only editor in this list to have people masking. So with its accurate AI subject and background masking, coupled with precise people masking, Capture One is now more than ever the editor to go to when you need to batch process photos with sophisticated local adjustments. No other editor in this list comes close. 
Also in October, Capturon released Match Color, which allows any photo to mimic the look of a reference photo. It was the best implementation of this feature of all the features of this type released this year and another differentiator for Capture One. In terms of its photo manager, better than DxO, Capture One's file manager supports both video and mobile RAW files, which DxO lacks. It also has full-fledged cataloging, search, and organizational capabilities over DxO's more limited functionality. So with the criteria we have just set out, Capture One is crowned the best RAW editor with a perpetual license in 2024. However, are there any reasons to choose DxO over Capture One? Definitely yes. You might have an issue with Capture One's price, which is 50% higher than DxO's for a first-time purchaser and could be a lot more if you're an upgrader. You might also dislike Capture One's lack of AI noise reduction. Its traditional denoising tools perform significantly worse than DxO's or even on one's AI-based tools. If you want denoising, you will likely have to shell out more money for a third-party AI denoiser, perhaps DxO Pure Raw, which jacks up the price and adds extra steps to your workflow. Unlike DxO, which has a great denoiser built in. Also, if you have to constantly fix dull or washed out photos, you might also prefer DxO's best-in-class Clearview Dehaze and Micro Contrast tool over Capture One's poorer performing equivalents, which I've shown in previous videos. So there you have it, the top five RAW editors for 2024. Congratulations to Capture One and all the RAW editors which made it to this list. I'm already looking forward to what new features are in store in 2025. By the way, once again, as a reminder, I will be making a companion video comparing photos edited with the various RAW editors so you can be the final judge and don't have to rely on my conclusions. So do watch out for that. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.